when i first arrived in the uk i was expecting everybody to speak english but no l e i c e s t e r how do you pronounce this word leicester but they don't pronounce it leicester they call it it's hard to breathe but that's all right Hush. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Yeshiri Shay, the one and the only guys And we are back here again today guys on this beautiful day guys So guys, today I'm gonna start a new vlog series where I share my experiences in the UK So, basically, my life in London And to ensure you properly grasp these guys, I'm gonna go out also and vlog about these things Alright guys, anyway, that's it too much Today's video is gonna be about the 10 things that shocked me when I first arrived in the UK The 10 things that shocked me okay it's gonna be more about um the culture shocks all right guys i mean it's been a while that i arrived here uh about 12 years now anyway guys before we start this video make sure you go down quickly smash like subscribe give me that love 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 and let's get this started so first of all guys we're gonna talk about the weather um when i first arrived while I was sitting in the plane, I noticed the weather changed even in the plane. Like there was a certain change. I felt a certain shiver. Okay, I had a jacket on. Yeah, I had a jacket on in the plane. But I was like, what kind of cold is this? Look, I felt it inside. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like it was cold, cold. But I just felt a change. Yeah, I felt a change in the atmosphere. So uh, when we landed and I stepped out of the plane. Yeah, you know the transfer between the plane into the waiting area and arrivals oh my god the cold like the cold that experience from there while in transit guys i've never felt cold like that before imagine someone coming from a very warm country used to the sun shining so let's say from a minimum weather of like maybe 18 degrees to like a maximum of 40 degrees yeah coming to a country where the weather was goes to even minus in my country yeah nigeria if i came average temperature is about 26 degrees average that's average all year round just an average yeah but yo the cold was crazy and imagine i arrived in around september when it wasn't really really cold yet and i was like whoa <laughs> what if it got to december when it's usually meant to snow i mean it doesn't it doesn't snow all the time but when it's meant to snow i was like what am i gonna do talking about the weather in the uk the weather is the most unstable thing ever in one day you can experience the whole seasons the whole seasons it could be cold in the morning it could be hot in the afternoon it could start raining in the evening i'm back to cold again it's so crazy you could dress up yeah ready to go out like you know summer top as soon as you go to the park boom it starts raining or you want to leave the house you dress the raincoat you go out it's going to be sunny all day so the weather uh, the weather is crazy if you're from like a tropical country you know what, let's make it easy if you're from a warm country coming down here you have to be prepared you have to be ready just get that gear ready just get your jacket ready at any time because the weather could easily change okay okay point number two the people when i arrived and i stepped out of the plane yeah i was expecting to see 100 percent white people <laughs> like just white people everywhere i expected to see a lot 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 of english people but guys na 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 london is very very multicultural very multicultural if you pick every 10 people let's say two could be white english and the rest are every, everything else okay you see africans asians other europeans americans london is properly like when you say a melting pot london is a melting pot i remember when i was walking out of the airport and i saw some asians i was like oh chinese that's what i said because like in nigeria we just call all asians chinese but obviously they're not all chinese and i realized that calling all asian chinese is derogatory so i stopped it i realized that okay asians are not just japanese um chinese and koreans I found out that there are more, there are Thai, there are Filipinos, Filipinas, there are Indonesians, there are Burmese, there are Nepalese, there are Vietnamese, there are many, 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 many me's, quite a lot. So yeah, I, I learned that out here as well. And also I met a lot of Euro Europeans, Italians, Spanish, Dutch. I met them all guys. I met them all in London. Okay. Point number three, language. So when I first arrived in the UK, I was expecting 
everybody to speak English but no not everybody speak English in this country guys not everybody at first year I was really shocked because I was like I was speaking to some white people and then they couldn't understand English I was like what's going on I was like what's going on yeah like my childhood dreams yeah you're ruining my childhood dreams imagine like all the movies I've been watching white people speaking English and all of that suddenly I come here I try to speak to you you guys don't understand English and then I realized that oh there are lots of white people from different countries that are Romanians I've never met Romanians I didn't even know about Romanians but then Romanians Italians, Russians, Ukrainians, Spanish, people from different countries traveling here and obviously they have their different languages as well and um, they sort of struggle to speak English. So there are also Africans here as well that can speak proper English. Then we have lots of Asians. Oh, lots of Asians. So many Asians. I'm like, wow, interesting. Anyway guys, anyway guys, when you come to the UK, do not expect everybody to speak English, okay? Don't do it. Don't do it. If not, your heart will be broken, okay? <laughs> Okay, okay, straight to the very next point, the pronunciations. How the British pronounce their words. Guys, to be honest, it's crazy. It is very crazy. First time I saw a word spelled L-E-I-C-E-S-T-E-R. How do you pronounce this word? No, to be honest, how do you pronounce this word? So the English people taught us how to speak English and how to pronounce words, yeah? And then we used <laughs> the educational system to pronounce the words now that word goes Leicester. Is it not Leicester? But they don't pronounce it Leicester. They call it Leicester. Where did the first E, I, and C go to? Why is it Leicester? Like where did it disappear to? It just pum disappeared. That's crazy. Then uh, this one Tottenham. <laughs> Tottenham. Like all of a sudden it is Tottenham. They say Tottenham. I'm like. I'm like, wait, I'm getting something wrong. I'm getting something wrong. English teacher, <laughs> English teacher, look, you taught me wrongly. Tottenham becomes Tottenham. Oh my. <laughs> and this other word as well, Southwark. Yeah, Southwark becomes. <laughs> Guys, guess. Southwark becomes Sodom. Sodok. <laughs> don't ask me guys, don't ask me. Then this particular word I find it a bit hard to pronounce. Look, it's spelled Cheshire. <laughs> Cheshire. <laughs> but they pronounce it Cheshire. I don't know how Cheshire becomes Cheshire. <laughs> okay? Cheshire. How? <laughs> how? Anyway guys, okay. Once you come here, you just have to learn. That's it. Just learn. Don't complain. Finally, I'm going to tell you one more. <laughs> the last one. It's Worcester. <laughs> Worcester. Guys, can you guess how it's pronounced? It's pronounced Worcester. <sighs> Let's go to the next point, guys. Next point is the buildings and the infrastructure. When we hit the roads, guys, like, so we got out of the airport, we hit the roads. I was expecting to see a highway. I mean, I was expecting to see a way so, so broad, yeah? You feel like you're in heaven flying. But guys, it was small. Yeah, compared to the roads in Nigeria, the roads here are small. Like, when I say small, I really small. I was like, wow. Okay, expectation versus reality. And the houses as well, I was expecting to see big houses the houses here they look like they're trying to minimize space and look i'm like there's quite a lot of land there's quite a lot of land around but why do you minimize the space so much very narrow roads very small houses well i guess i don't know uh, they conserve space but they are really small guys okay and i expect to see very modern houses like we see in the movies in america and that but obviously this is the uk not america um, they preserve their history most of the houses are the victorian style i mean preserve your history guys do your thing if you want to see modern buildings there are places where you can find modern buildings i mean canary wharf like the you see um skyscrapers there london bridge as well uh, liverpool street 
then you go central London. Yeah, so uh, one thing like I would say that I really love about the British people is how they preserve their history. And that's one reason why London is the number one city in the whole world. And then talking about water and power, electricity. Since I've been in this country for over 10 years to 12 years now, uh, we've never had blackouts, okay? Electricity has never been out. NEPA has never taken light. So in Nigeria, we say, NEPA! NEPA don't take light! Or PHTN. Now nah, here, never plus the water is drinkable you can actually drink it yeah but what i do is that i let the water run for a bit yeah because sometimes you see some skills so just let the water run for a bit then you can fetch it and drink it up to you then driving the cars driving on the left hand side of the road where i come from i'm used to car driving on the right hand side and I'm, in many countries I, I know cars drive on the right hand side but for the uk driving on the left hand side i almost got run over a car i was walking here i looked i saw there was no car i was like i was about to get in on that <laughs> i mean you rarely hear people honing as well like people who rarely ever honk here yeah? like it's hard so so hard i mean in my years coming here i was like why is it so quiet yeah it's so quiet in nigeria as soon as you step off the house, you better Cars honing and honing and honing and honing and honing, honing so annoying. But I got used to it. And then coming here, I was like, Can you hear that? They hear what? The silence. No one's honing. Yeah, it's crazy. And another thing, having dedicated cycle lanes. Like lanes dedicated to bicycles. Lanes dedicated to bicycles. I had never seen that before. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Incredible. Yeah, yeah. Big up to you guys. Yeah, big up to you guys. Like, there's a lot Africa needs to learn. Okay, number seven. Okay, number seven. We are gonna talk about freedom of expression, freedom to be yourself, just general real freedom. Okay, guys. Guys, when I got to this country, I experienced true freedom, true liberty. Okay, some people be like, oh, there's still some racism. We're not going to talk about racism today, guys. But when you talk about freedom, freedom of expression, okay, freedom of speech, freedom to be who you are, you have a lot of freedom here, guys. So much freedom. Uh, the first time I ever saw people kissing, yeah, I mean, apart from going to a wedding where they say, you may kiss the bride, mm -hmm. Mm, kiss the bride, mm -hmm. you may kiss the bride, mm -hmm. and even the children, when they're going to kiss, they go like this, they go like. <laughs> yeah, that's in Africa, yeah. But here, on the road, I saw a guy and his girl, they were going. I was like, oh my days. I had never seen that in my life before. I mean, I've seen it on TV, but I'd never seen it live. I was just like, what? She? Anyway, I was really shocked. Yeah, I was really, really shocked. Whew. And then I got on the bus, came back home. There are two men sat in front of me. Um, one African, one, I don't know, European. So I put my head down, pick up my phone. When I looked up, <laughs> my guys were I was like oh my days like no long ago I saw the first guy and first lady kissing on the streets okay now in the bus I see two men them kissing I mean Africa that never happens never 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 ever happens because in Africa it's seen as a taboo but here there's so much freedom so much freedom people don't appreciate it okay people here don't appreciate how much freedom they have you have so much freedom here guys you guys should enjoy it okay grasp it hold it don't let it go okay now let's talk about the food and drinks guys you know me I love food okay I love my food uh, first of all, let's talk about tea. Let's talk about tea. English people love their tea. You cannot take away tea from the English people. And English people love their tea breaks. Like, I remember when I was working, they love the tea breaks. Once it's tea break, they're like, mm, tea break. What well, everything you're doing stops. Everything just goes to a... It's tea break. Straight to tea break or coffee breaks. Um, some people say English people are not really big on coffee. Yeah, I'll say, yeah, maybe English people are not too big on coffee, but where I used to work, 
we had this um, espresso machine. I'm telling you, all my colleagues will come down. They'll be like, oh, we have some coffee. Some coffee, please, mate. And they go straight. Boom. Get the coffees. Yeah. Tea break. Coffee break. They don't mess about with that. And the smoking break as well. <laughs> Almost five minutes per hour. Every, every five minutes an hour, they're out for their smoking break again. And British people love their beer. You can't take beer away from British people, okay? Everywhere you go, there are pubs. There are pubs down the almost every street. You must find a pub. And um, the fish and chips. British people love fish and chips. What? <laughs> I'm like fish and chips. I'm not a big fan of fish and chips. Okay, I'd rather have my chicken and chips with some ketchup, some mayonnaise, some burger sauce on the side. So I dip in this one. I dip in that. I dip in that. Mm, then with my chicken thighs and my chicken leg. I'm like, oh, oh, this is life. But British people love their fish and their chips. Okay, and maybe in London, the streets, a lot of people like the street food, like um, the kebabs, the shawamas. I know in uh, in Nigeria, kebab, shawarma, these are like luxury food, but here they're street food. Street food. Food you eat when you come back home from a late night out. Okay, and guys, I want to touch on one thing the full English breakfast. For me, that is the best breakfast in the world. Nothing can ever top the full English breakfast. I love that thing, yeah, like, oh my days. Guys, nothing can beat the full English breakfast. And um, I know British people have got something called pie mash and liquor. I mean, generally, British British food um, is plain. Oh, you know, like plain Jane's, no flavor and that. Usually, yeah, most of it, yeah. Anyway, going to the next point. So I've done point number eight. Now point number nine. We're going to talk about transport system guys the transport system here is very very well connected okay if you live in london you might never need a car because having a car might be extra expenses okay it might even be more of a luxury than a necessity but then my advice is if you want to have a car you should live on the outskirts of london so you don't have to pay congestion charge if not the congestion charge the road tax oh my days guys so many tax so many taxes the mot is just so 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 crazy okay for consumption as well and there's some extra emission charges that I'm bringing in again. Guys, it's just crazy. It just makes the expenses bigger. Big, big, big. The London tube system, it is excellent. Very excellent. Okay, you can get to almost any part of London to other part of London within an hour and a half. Depending on where you're going to. Let's say you're going from one extreme end to the other extreme end. But usually, um, everywhere, anywhere you're going to within half an hour, you're there already. It's comfortable. Okay, I mean, sometimes it gets a bit noisy. <laughs> especially the Bikulu line but generally it's comfortable and we have the iconic red buses as well the double decker buses where you need to use your oyster card i mean you need the oyster card in the tube as well in the buses you need the oyster card in the trains if you're traveling within london from zone one to zone six but outside the zones you have to pay extra yeah and you have the black cabs as well the black cabs pricey because they run on the meter but it's comfortable you just has this experience this feel like yo i'm in a james bond movie come on yeah yeah so that's number nine the transport system and finally we are going to number 10. finally coming to the last point point number 10 okay equal opportunities for everyone okay one thing that I really love this country for is the equal opportunities for everyone regardless of your race, your age, your sex, your gender there are equal opportunities for everyone okay for everyone and people are encouraged to chase their dreams chase what it, what it is you love just go for it go for it okay um, you never be discriminated on things like this I know a lot of people talk about racism saying okay um, there is some institutional racism guys we are talking about equality people have equality right here okay maybe another day we shall we shall hit on um that topic of a uh, preference borderline discrimination like you know hidden racism but i'm telling you from my experience what i experienced yeah was the equality like i was so impressed with that yeah very very impressed in nigeria you go to look for a job you don't know anybody forget it just forget it you need to know someone and it's even almost public you need to know someone to get anything at all but here you don't even need to know anybody you just can just go on your ones go on your own apply for a job anywhere go for an interview employ your merit maybe there are certain roles where you need to know someone i don't know i don't know but from my own experience yeah guys from my experience 
there's equal opportunities here anyway guys anyway guys these are just the 10 of the culture shock that I experienced here even if it's not culture shock I'll just say the 10 things that shocked me when I first arrived this country a long time ago there's still more to come this is just a part one um, hopefully I will do more but I do hope you really enjoyed this I hope this has taught someone something do let me know what you think about this in the comment section guys let me know what points you like the most guys okay anyway it's me your boy Shady Shade the one and only guys the very one and only guys yes 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 make sure you smash like subscribe give me some love it's gonna be a peace out Oh, you are the light that shine in my way.